Another uh, interesting aspect about the battle is that the occupation after the battle. Now during uh, the engagement when uh, basically uh, Washington was thrown to Chester, the British had free run of anybody. Anybody, any house they can get into, any liquor, any uh, stock, animals, anything that these uh, local inhabitants had they took. In back of uh, me is a very old house. Uh, it's a 1704 house, extremely old for the area. Now this house was restored many years ago, probably in the 60s, to its original condition. This is what it would have looked like during the Battle of Brandywine. It would have looked just like this. The leaded glass windows are original. Uh, not original, but they're uh, identical to the original. And all the, the serpentine is all local stone. Now this was a Quaker structure. And if you look at it, it's an extreme Quaker structure. Quaker buildings were very plain. They're very uh, square buildings, and they weren't very decorative. This is the home of William Britton. Now, William, the Britons were uh, very, um, they came over from uh, England, uh, I think in the, probably around the 1690s. And during that time, he settled, uh, he actually got this land from William Penn. And he settled in this house right here with his family. He had built the house with uh, uh, immigrant labor, Germans and other people came over here and built this house for him from across the sea. Now as you see, there's a lot of land here and it looks exactly like it would have during the Battle of Brandywine. Now to the field off to my right over here, like I was saying when the Americans were retreating from uh, Dilworth Town, there was cannons in that field. A couple pieces that survived stayed in that field and gave, uh, gave uh, the, some of the, I think the Grenadiers a good shot for their money because the Grenadiers were coming up here. Everybody was still coming in this area. There were still uh, some stragglers, some um, American stragglers in the area. So basically, uh, after the, the, the conflict, all these kind of homes that you see behind me were uh, taken over. Uh, basically, they were lived in. They were, they were uh, like I said, they were plundered. But this one here is great because it survives. Uh, the British had a really interesting idea of burning things also. Now, if they thought something had something good used for the American cause, say grist mills, they just burned them down. A lot of our uh, foundries where they made ironworks were burned to the ground. Valley Forge is actually a forge. It was burned to the ground by the British before the encampment. But these were spared. And because we're lucky today, many, many, many years later, that we can have homes like this in our area. Now the William Britton House is now a museum. And there was a list uh, that was made after the war and stated all the furniture that was taken out of this house. And because of that list, we now replaced all the furniture in that house to the original possessions. So basically we have uh, 16th and 17th century, well, 16th, 17th, 18th century furniture in this house. And it's an incredible uh, monument to the past. It's an incredible monument to the Battle of Brandywine. And uh, I'm very happy when I drive by and look at it, knowing that you know, other people can enjoy it for years to come. It is a protected site. And uh, I'm just uh, very interested and uh, hopefully you are too.